Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. I am Connor from the House of I'm... Rand. <laughs> I'm Rebecca <laughs> from No um, House. Yeah, I'm um, Omar from Kunlun. <laughs> Emma from New York City. Yeah. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> we should all be angry and destroy our enemies with our fists. Yes. <laughs> yes. On a daily basis. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So... Big thanks to our patrons, Derek and Ray and Anonymous. Thanks, guys, for supporting us, even though we haven't released an episode in five months, which I didn't actually realize. Um, and then I looked and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Um, so, because I was like, I have, my, I have a visitor for three weeks. I'm like, I'll get an episode out so there'll be one while I'm gone for three weeks. And then I'm like, oh, but there hasn't been one for five months. So, yeah. Uh, that happens. So I thought, okay, well, I'll read Heroes for Hire 14. And 15, and then I read Heroes for Hire 14, and it mentioned Danny was off on his own miniseries. And I'm like, you know what, mm-hmm. this has been so long, why don't we just do that miniseries in full on an episode? Um, so we get some, like, meaty content out. Uh, and, yeah, there's... I think we talked about this last time, but... Or, I don't know if we did or not, but the... the in terms of Iron Fist news, he has his 50th special coming out in August, which is getting close. Um, and we haven't heard a lot more information about it. We have heard a bit more um, since we last talked about it. It's crazy that like we last talked about it in February, and we've only just had more information recently. So we've we've got a bit more about the creative team. Yeah, well, I yeah. guess we found out about it pretty mm-hmm. early. So yeah, like, how, yeah. How much can you find out about it, really? Um, right. like I think I have... was just waiting for for confirmation. You know, it was nice to hear that. Oh yeah, we're working on something, but to actually have it in the solution. Yeah, and also like we went, got, okay, good. We got actually to see the variant covers. I'm yes. glad that the Yaha one is an extra money, so I've got that yes. one on over there. <laughs> um, I did I did think about it because I do think the main cover is very nice. Um, yeah. but I I I can't help it. You put all yeah. another cover. That's why I get. A lot of the covers are decent, but none of them scream to me. You have to buy this, but I think I'm going to get the one where he's punching the skeleton because yeah, yeah I love that. Good. I've always liked that piece. It was, I'm, I'm glad they're using that one. Um, and we also, I guess, the yeah. other big news that we have is that one of the stories is going to be about what's next for Danny, which was nice. Yeah, to hear. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm both happy and nervous about that one. Yeah, <laughs> because it was yeah. very much what's next for Danny, not. Not yeah, what, what, what yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm cautiously um, optimistic about it. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's like most of the book seems to be about Danny. Like there is a Lin Lee story yeah, in there, yeah. but most of it seems mm-hmm. to be about Danny, which I think is better than um, what I expected. Like I yeah, it's, it's you know. there's a lot to be excited about, and I'm really excited. I think it's cool we're getting a Chris Claremont story. I think it's yeah. cool that that Misty and Colleen are also getting a story. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, kind of a nice variety. The most amazing action artists. Yeah, for me, uh, I think Elena Casagrande has done such. She did such such good work on the Black Widow. Run. Oh yeah. Um, I yeah. But I cannot wait to see her drawing Danny with the girls. Yeah, so I'm really excited. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if uh, we're getting the, we're also getting the original Heroes for Hire. Yeah, we uh, are. With, uh, with just, well, we're getting with, a Heroes for Hire story. So yeah, I'm whether hoping. it's it's the original team or it's the the second uh, uh, group would... with uh, She Hulk and uh, the one that, and Black Knight and stuff. So. Uh, I would assume it's probably the original I'm because it's so iconic. The it's kind of yeah. the classic. Yeah, yeah I hope so too. Line up. Uh, it's the uh, one you associate bad. Iron Fist with. I mean, like, I know we associate Iron Fist with the other one as well, mm-hmm. but it's the one, the, the him and Luke's the one you really associate with Iron Fist. It's so, a shame yeah. that, I mean, like, uh, Chris Claremont's an awesome grab for this. Yeah. Um, yes. 
you know, but it, it is a bit of a shame we don't have like Kerry Andrews or Ed Brisson or Ed Brubaker yeah. doing a story because I mean, like, they're yeah. the kind yeah. of other iconic writers. But yeah, I had a. I mean, obviously, I had my dream vision of what I would want, and it would be you know, <laughs> yeah, bringing back all those people. You know, Mary Jo Duffy doing a story would be really cool. Um, you know, the yeah. whole yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm surprised it, it Kerry really Andrews be... isn't doing a cover. True. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. He's been doing a lot of covers for X Men, Spider Man. Got a little bit of trouble last week for that, but um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, what happened? Um, I, I'm kind of surprised he's not doing a cover because he does seem to be back with Marvel for covers at least. But yeah. I guess there's also there's probably a limit to how big they how wanted many? to make yeah. this, mm-hmm. or how much they think they can sell an Iron Fist. How much money they wanted to put into it? Yeah. Maybe some writers. Yeah, are and how much money they think, others. and also how much money they think they'll make from it. Because yeah. you know, I imagine there is a limited amount of number who will, people who buy this, so mm. they need to get that sort of like how thick you can make it, what price you can charge for it, and what kind of works for them so i understand why it's not and like, i think you're, everyone's true. right is that they they've touched on like we have a we have a it's mostly danny we have like mm-hmm. daughters of the dragon heroes for hire which is nice sort of touches um yeah we've got you know a classic tale featuring wolverine we could do without wolverine in my opinion but um you know they're going to touch on in the okay, <laughs> and uh, yeah. the future for Danny is the is the, is the hook, right? Um, mm. So we'll see. But um, yeah, I, I was a little um, disappointed to see now that we have the the September solicitations that there's no no Iron Fist. You know, I was yeah. hoping this would be kind of be a springboard for something, and clearly there's, we'll have to wait uh, wait a little bit longer. But there's been a lot of hints uh-huh. about a new Avengers team, however. Um, uh, if you read the lame books that I read, no, they're not lame. Um, <laughs> uh, Iron Man very clearly in in the last issue was talking to Rhodey about going and setting up a new team, and uh, also made the comment that he really likes the West Coast. Um, uh-huh. You know, weren't there like references to West Coast Avengers West Coast in Avengers. a few months ago, uh, uh, with like Hawkeye calling people about it? Because um, I know there's there's a new Avengers Assemble team. Is that is that what you're talking about? The... No, I'm talking about a potential future end of year kind of thing. Oh. That no, but I mean, like, I think Rhodey and and Tony were talking about slightly more Thunderboltsy type of Avengers. Oh. But um, I don't know. There does seem to be all this sort of rattling about about new new Avengers teams. So. I guess yeah. there's a potential, but first of all, we'd have to know what Danny's doing because, like, if it's Lindley, I yeah. don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I'd probably pay attention, but it, it's going to be hard. It's going to take a while and yeah. a lot of restitution to make me genuinely care for the character um, because yeah. I just did not get that last miniseries. It did not, uh, it did not make me love him, and I think Danny wasn't treated all that well I in it. So obviously, there's mm-hmm. people who liked that last series, but I think. Most, like the majority of the fans of Lindley in that series would have been already fans of Swordmaster. Yeah. Master, so yeah, mm-hmm. but so. also I think even people that I know like Swordmaster found it very hard to follow that series. So yeah. which was essentially my problem with it, not just that it didn't make me love him, but that I don't really. <laughs> it was just very mm-hmm. fractured. Yeah. So um, well, I mean, know, I'm, he... I'm hoping the 50th anniversary gives me a, a good, better introduction to him. I'm not segueing because I'm mm. not ready to jump into this mini series yet. But if you didn't know Iron Fist's history pretty well, then this series we're covering today would be like really confusing. Genuinely, um, <laughs> yeah. Like so, yes. But this going all the way back to the Chris Claremont putting Wolverine and the Iron Fist story. I mean, it kind of makes sense to me because obviously he wrote that really iconic X Men run. Just yeah, actually, mm-hmm. even concurrently with Iron Fist, he was doing that. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, oh yeah, so, then there's Iron Fist yes. 15, which I love, which is his oh, him <laughs> fighting the X Men. So if it's yeah, something I like mean, that, we love that. Yeah. I have a feeling this might be an old story that he never got published. Yeah, that would make even that would actually be even cooler, to be honest. Because yeah. like, yeah, I think it's gonna be about like Saber that. That's what they did for Action Comics 1000. There was like a Marv Wolfman story, but it was just like a story that. 
didn't get published. Hmm. Uh, and a Jerry Siegel story uh, as well that they just didn't cool. get published. So. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and yeah, I would imagine Sabretooth would be in it just because he, he does have a connection, a, a stronger connection to Iron Fist. Yeah, and at the time they were just uh, trying to to connect Sabretooth with Wolverine. And uh, the way uh, John Byrne actually designed the, how Wolverine was supposed to look like under the mask um, looked a little bit like uh, Sabretooth. So until, you know, Dave Cockrum um, came up with the iconic look of Wolverine, um, at the time, Byrne's idea was uh, that he would look something like that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, and speaking of John Byrne, uh, it's actually his birthday today. So oh, wow. happy birthday to the Masters. It's July 6th today. Um <laughs> And in the U.S. and uh, I think all over the world by now. So happy birthday! Angry, angry man. <laughs> <laughs> and what what were you thinking, making Superman a bit of a stooge for Reagan? Like that was stupid. <laughs> uh, goes against yeah. everything that the character should stand for. But to be fair, that wasn't your fault. You weren't the one who started that whole thing. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Twitter, so all angry. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I also wanted to... I was going to briefly cover Heroes for Hire 14 in terms of, like, you know, I don't know if any uh, of you read it. I look, I meant to, but I got up early to read these comics, as you know, and ended up reading one an hour. <laughs> I yes. got to like I got to half an hour ago and went, uh, nah, I'm not reading it. <laughs> I, because I kept getting very distracted with with news. Uh, obviously, it's it's a big news week in in the UK, yeah. and I kept getting distracted and about people wanting to talk about it. So I kept and and as Connor knows, I was I was actually digesting them. Like I was taking it like really slowly, uh, much slower <laughs> than I usually read comics. I mean, and uh, yeah. so I didn't get around to Heroes for Hire, but like, you know, I will read it after the event. It's not like I've never read the series before. No, I generally, yeah, I generally don't leave. I read like a comic a day if I'm doing a podcast because I know that they can be deceptively um, long sometimes. Yeah. Uh, like those I was just really through. enjoying it, as yeah. as we'll come through in this discussion. But like one of the first things I realised was this is one of the runs where I actually have a lot of screen caps, or uh, specifically one, uh, or oh, uh, that I've used a lot in like talking to people. So it was kind of like because you know like I keep them and then realised afterwards that maybe I should have said where they were all from, and it was just <laughs> too big a task at that job. So every time I read comics that they come out from, I'm like, ah, oh, it's cool. Like I should note that, you know. Uh, it was nice. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. for Hire 14, I figured was, like, not, like, definitely not worth an episode onto itself. And since it sort of references this series, I thought I may as well just tack it on in this. Uh, it's basically, you know, a Black Knight story, and it's, there's, like, a dragon that's involved. And, well, you know, it's actually really good. In fact, I think it's one of the yeah. better Heroes for Hire issues. Um, yeah, I really, I really like this issue. I'd forgotten about this issue, but it was yeah. fun to reread it. So yeah, don't don't skip this one just because it doesn't okay. have Iron Fist. I will Fist read it afterwards. I yeah, it's really yeah. fun, and I just I like the way they sort of incorporated dragons into New York City. So yeah. oh, now I'll read it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a really it's really fun dragon. premise. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. It's really really clever. I'm gonna leave it at that. Just go read the issue. Um. And, well, I'll also mention, like, I really like the art of Black Knight fighting a dragon in New York City. But, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't have any main plot progression or anything, so we won't, like, dwell on it um, here. And that's kind of nice, because it stands on its own, um, in a way, more yeah. than yeah. a lot of the other it's issues. Yeah, sometimes mm. for that to happen. It's probably one of the reasons yeah. that it is one of the stronger issues. It focuses on a character, mm. and it's sort of standalone. Ish, yeah. you know. It's pretty simple. Yeah, so, and we yeah. still have, you know, quite a a uh, a few pages of uh, Misty and White Tiger as well. Oh right, so no, yeah, that, we got to talk about that. That's sort um, of our yeah. 
Danny uh, fix right there. True, yeah. Sorry, Rebecca, getting spoilers here because yeah, this was funny. I mean, I'm not really. <laughs> I, like I said, I have read it before. White Tiger is like because I'm a tiger, I'm going to kill Misty. So then. <laughs> Danny will love okay. me because Misty's dead. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> God bless her. I love the, I love, I love the, the white so tiger cool. attempt of this whole "I'm a tiger turned human" thing, and the yeah. kind of like crush on Danny. But th- she just has the most bonkers <laughs> ideas of, like, that, that are you know, like, this is not going to work. You yeah. know, Misty does <laughs> manage to fend her off and say, uh, "Since you're a tiger, I'll explain to you that." In the human world, it doesn't quite work like that. Yeah, yeah. that's insane. (laughs) She's Uh, like, you have to tell Danny how you feel, and if he reciprocates it, I'll step aside. Because she probably knows that Danny's not going to reciprocate. Yeah, right. And I I, I also, but you know, good for them for like uh, stepping up to that. She's a tiger, so she doesn't really understand these things. But like. I think it's above and beyond the let's because it is insane. It, it, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it though. I thought it was pretty funny. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's it's, a, it's cute, I'd say, <laughs> because uh, Misty's giving a uh, love advice to White Tiger, and he's she's saying mating isn't a matter of dominance. It's a it's a feeling. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so that explains why uh, she came after him. Okay, that made sense now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a bit different in the animal kingdom than it is to humans. <laughs> to humans, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, at the moment. I always en- <laughs> yeah, and I always enjoy non-human characters being hit with, with very human-specific yeah, things yeah. and not knowing how to deal with them. I think that's always really interesting. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed yeah. this scene as well. But now we're going to jump over to Iron Fist, Volume 3, uh, which was published in 1998. And uh, the storyline is called In the Fold, which is very vague and odd. And they probably could have done with a cooler title, like, Ooh, of Death Sting, or... Or just anything. I mean, it's a terrible (laughs) title. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I so... didn't even notice the title, which is like because I never look at them. But that is a <laughs> yeah, title. Yeah. I just want to check that all the covers have like the same artist. Um, yes, they it, do. It's the same one. Carlos. Uh, Carlos oh, wait, no, the, and the third one is Pascal Ferry. Yeah, I thought the third one looked. Oh, different. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, oh yeah, their their styles a bit uh, a bit the same. Yeah. You kind of see this Iron Fist cut out a lot, like, away from the cover in the first issue, like that Mm -hmm. pose, but I think it, like, and I don't really like that Iron Fist just by itself, but I think it works really well in the cover. Yeah, Um, I agree. So, yeah, and this was written, to my surprise, I have read this before, years ago, uh, but this was written by Dan Jurgens, or as we call him on Last Sons of Krypton, Dan (laughs) Sturgeon Jurgens. Um, and uh, yeah. uh, his penciler was Jackson. Does anyone Geese. know him? Thank I, you. Geese, uh, guys. I, think. I think it's Geiss. Okay. Is it Geiss? I, I used to pronounce it as always, Geiss. Because, <laughs> well, because, you know, there's Butch Geiss. Yes, um, the same guy. Hmm. Uh, right, so we used to call him Butch Guys. <laughs> So I think I don't. So I don't know if that's true or not. But I will tell you that we used to call him Butch Guys because it made us laugh. Right. <laughs> so the inker is Scott Coblish. The colorist is Tom Zuko. The letterer is Bill Oakley, and it's the same for every issue. So, uh, yeah, Dan Jurgens, very prolific Superman writer and creator uh-huh. of Brewster Gold. That would be what he's known for. Hooray. Um I Death of Superman. Yeah, yeah, as he'll tell you. Um <laughs> But I'm I'm not really a fan of his Superman writing mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Because he was in okay. the Triangle era, which is where there was four issues a month and you read them in order, but each issue you know, one issue would be Louis Simonson, another one would be Roger Stern, mm-hmm. and then the next one would be Dan Jurgens. And for me, I always found his ones just were like a step down in quality from the others. And um 
Uh, but I love his artwork. I adore his artwork. Yeah. Mm. I wish he was doing the artwork for this. The art's fine, but. The art's better than I expected yeah. for the period of comics. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's um, kind of how I feel about it. Is that I, it doesn't, I don't love it, but yeah. it's it's certainly um, not offensive or, you know, yeah. it, it doesn't, it's not unpleasant to look at. It's, it's, it does yeah. the job. I think it's good. Uh, I think the layouts could just be a bit messy sometimes, but other than that, like, mm-hmm. I think the art is mostly good. Uh, like, Joy's yeah, face is a bit weird sometimes, but... Some very yeah, good daddy faces in it. Well, I, I, yeah. I think Iron Fist has done really well by the yeah, artist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, some really great poses in there. And. True. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, but I think Dad Jurgens writes a pretty solid Iron Fist. Yeah. I think um, it's one of the more underrated uh, Iron Fist runs. Yeah, I think. It- I mean, it's very short, um, which, yes, I can, which is clearly why it's probably underestimated. I got it yeah. confused with a different one that I don't like very much. So I was really delighted to read it again. Um, <laughs> and it is very convoluted. In yes. Yeah, and like but you it, mentioned, it's very deep in the continuity. So if you don't is, know, if you don't know the love letter to it, though, like, I, you know, like, I yeah. kind of yeah. wish it had gone on in a way. Like, I wish yeah, it had not... been longer and they'd had more time to play with this the setup before whatever reset yeah yeah no i i love that for it i wasn't saying that as a i was only saying that no 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 i was was, was, it it. It was just like it's just a shame that it didn't have like that it wasn't able to like sort of be a mini or a a proper mini or a max series yeah absolutely yeah i would have loved that um yeah yeah, i think that's what holds it back again not in a bad way but just how deeply entrenched in the quote-unquote lore of iron fist it is and mm-hmm. the fact that first issue, but you, I hope you've read his original run. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's not I mean, even like. To be fair, it does reiterate the origin a little bit. It but, does, yeah. but like it's pulling almost out in a way like that scimitar, becomes a little bit too so. much. It's like it's kind of like it's too much information to take in all at once. Like, yeah. so I I agree with yeah. you, Connor. I'm just like they do try and do it, but it's just so much information and it is so com- uh, you know it, it, when you try and condense it it becomes even more complicated right like when you can yeah. tell yeah, it over yeah, yeah so. it's and genuinely not meant to be an introductory run no which is fine mm-hmm. the thing is that i found funny that uh i was glad though is that because they, they never really resolve the joy meacham thing it just kind of goes away like she pops up again in power man and iron fist but it's just sort of but this mini series actually resolves that, which is good. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting though because they they do kind of resolve their issues um, pretty early on in Power Man and Iron Fist, and then I mean they're not best buddies or anything, but they're you know they're on speaking terms. Like Danny goes to her in one of the later issues of Power Man and Iron Fist for business advice, and so right, it is interesting yeah. here that he's so untrusting of her. Yeah. When it seemed like they had actually put their yeah, their baggage it, yeah. to rest. Okay. Yeah, I must just mm-hmm. not remember that. Um, no worries. Meeting. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But it is nice. To, I love getting to see Joy because we we so rarely see her. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, now we never see her. But even in these in these '90s issues or after Power Man Iron Fist, we never see her really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, so like, I guess the plot of this series is sort of, we have these two mysterious figures, one is called Death Sting and the other one is, what, Shadir or something? Yeah. And, uh, they want to steal the Scorpio key, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, the Scorpio key from this S.H.I.E.L.D. facility, and they keep hiring these thieves to do it, but they keep dying in the process. (laughs) So they're like, all right, well... Because they keep hiring terrible people. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like... You don't have the budget. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I guess, to me, I'm like, well, Iron Fist isn't known to be a master burglar, but he does have those skills, and I guess when you find out who these two people are, it makes sense that they would think of him as skilled enough to steal this key. But Danny's going on holiday from here to hire, 
and yeah. we have our He just second... needs a break. Oh. It's too much for him. We yeah, our... well, this is this is right after he almost died, so I I don't blame him. Take yeah. a, no, take a long no, it's, vacation, it's Danny. actually like great. It's actually yeah. a very healthy thing. We don't see in superheroes like now. If they did right. it, everyone would be like, "This is a great message about mental health." And like you know, <laughs> and and yeah, like, this is what I mean about sometimes you don't realize when that the comics were doing this before. You know, they if you don't frame it that way, then it doesn't become this like le- you know overbearing lesson. But right, it's just yeah, it's it's a sort of like. You know, this is a good thing. Like this terrible thing happened. You just need a break. Um, and then yeah, uh, it's, it's the second time he almost died. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then so you I, get the airport scene, which is the where I have the screen capture. Yeah. I was wondering. Um, I, that was my guess. <laughs> I mean, that, I, that has, I don't know right? why you have that, but um... because it's because his reaction when she says you're a professional wrestler or into, you know, is right. I'm a model, you know, dancer, private, which is possibly <laughs> the worst thing you could say. Yeah. And it's just this great example of like Danny just being like totally dorky idiot, not really getting it, trying yeah. to like come up with an excuse that actually makes things worse. Like, because then she just thinks he's a stripper, right? Um, and I, I just think that's something inherently funny in somebody finding a superhero's outfit in their luggage and jumping to the professional record, professional wrestler or stripper kind of like it's just funny right. to me. Well, <laughs> that's well, that's why I have it screen captured because it's something again I don't think I've seen it in any other comic where yeah. like they're sort of core cool, mm. and then and it just goes to this comedy thing and it's just and it's funny because it's Danny and because he's quite often this fish out of water with not really getting sort of social dynamics in in America um Mm -hmm. and and clearly he's used to using his own private jet so this is even funnier (laughs) but I don't know it just made me laugh so I take I take take anything that makes me laugh so yeah no I really enjoy this as well yeah let's go to before the airport uh because I like we have the second person narration back and mm. I like Hooray. that Danny is saying he's losing his edge because he's just sort of like in this team role and he's not doing things sort of on his own. So his skills yeah. are rusty. And I, mm-hmm. I've always kind of remembered that part. And it kind of also summarizes a bit why I prefer like his solo outings to team outings because there's always more fighting and more of him. Yeah. Pushing yeah, himself to yeah. the limits and stuff instead of just a sort of... I'm, I'm not huge into team books anyway, regardless. Mm. So, But yeah. Um, and he hops on a truck, which is... Kind of, a car, which is kind of funny, but... No, a bus. Yeah. A bus, I got there. Um, but yeah, and also, <laughs> we're not going to be breaking down this issue, like, super in-depth, like, detailing the list of sequences. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you read this issue. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm, absolutely. Want, read these. Read this series. Sorry if you don't want like general spoilers. But yeah, back to it. So yeah, he then we he does go to the airport. Also, the way he's drawn is that he does. It's not white where his mask is. You can see his eyes again. Oh, which I love. Which yeah. I really liked. Yeah. Mm. Like it just it feels like that art of him sitting on the bus and stuff. It just feels a lot more old school, which I really liked. <laughs> yeah. Like old school Iron Fist, and yeah, then we have the airport thing where he gets sexually harassed by the. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, he is. Security lady. I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> That's the thing is, I'm not gonna in any way defend her. What she does is yeah. terrible. It's just it. It's the it's the bit where he's blushing that makes me laugh, and says he's a private yeah. dancer. So if that will ever make the situation better. <laughs> She's yeah, like the, the the colorist got that right. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's very funny. She's the although his eyebrows version. are ridiculously yellow, but apart from that, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's the female version of like the heavy set mustache airport security guy. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. really. Is. <laughs> um, but, but again, yeah. have to give props for like people understanding that male superheroes can be objective, you know, objectified. That's also not right. Yeah. I, no, I think it's fine. Um, I think it's, uh, like, yeah, I guess it's funny how your takeaway is, like, it's also not right, and my takeaway is, it's also right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's only the same proper. way, right? We go, we go for equality either way, right? Yeah, I guess I just think of them as, like, you know, 
like the these uh, the he- superheroes are always sort of like the peak of humanity, and of course they're going to yeah. be beautiful and um, yeah. you know, we're not in the marble statue age, but uh, there yeah. was at one point where everyone was making statues of their favorite characters <laughs> and you yeah. know giving them certain assets in certain areas. So oh God, it's, it's taking me back to Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> oh no, well, let's not go <laughs> you there. You know exactly why um, as well. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, after that encounter, he's on the plane, and he's in between uh, a very large uh, lady and a very large nun. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, like... they're two large ladies, right? <laughs> and he's just One like cramped in between be a them. nun with a clipboard. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, she just immediately goes, are you familiar with the scriptures, young man? It's like, uh, what would she say if you went, no, I'm a Buddhist? Uh, Right? Like, but he manages to send himself to sleep, which is fine. I don't think I would be able to in that. Very impressive, but yeah. Yeah. And then without him hitting his head, we get a flashback of the fateful, you know, betrayal by Harold, killing his father after him and his mother fall off the cliff. And then the mother getting eaten by wolves off screen. And yeah, his origin. Really his origin, yeah. Two and, and a half story. Story. ages. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like every run has to have uh, yeah. a recap. You, you kind of want it for this, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you do. Um, <laughs> but you're right, they, they do all tend to. Um, and comics are just not as easy to get. As they yeah. are now, as well. So, like, for instance, I should have pointed out, you can you can get this issue in its singles, or I don't know if they ever published this as, like, a standalone trade, like, just this story. Um, I don't no, think they no. did. Yeah, I, I, I think they do think so. No. But it has Nowadays been... they would, but then they don't think they put out a trade for three issue stories. It has been mm. reprinted in the Iron Fist, The Return of Kunlun paperback collection. Mm. Um, which is actually quite a chunky mm. collection. It's got that the pretty good collection. Well, it collects yeah. all his solo series. Yeah, um, yeah, it's nice. Like um... from the like the nineties, so we have the Iron Fist Volume Two, which is the one before this, which we haven't covered. Uh, that's like the really nineties mm. one. That's yeah, uh, two issue one. Two issue one, which is you know batshit. Mm. Um, and then <laughs> there's this one, and then there's Iron Fist Wolverine One to Four, The Return of Kunlun, mm. which I'm We'll probably be doing soon. I would ha- I would guess, and then there's the Iron Fist 2004 one to six, which I seem to be the only person that likes. Um, and then <laughs> Uncanny Origins 14 and material from Marvel Knights Double Shot four. I think oh, I've read yes. those. But... I love those. Beautiful. Yeah. Be- beautiful artwork by Gene Ha for that Marvel yeah. Knights uh, is that the one... double shot. Is that it's the, the one where the, the mad scientist? But it has. Doing... It had, um, like, there was that, there was an Iron Fist story and there was a Black Widow story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. I think we've actually, we've covered yeah. that on the podcast, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, it was yeah I, really, I really, really like that one. Yeah. But yeah, obviously, uh, so it's a good trade, like, it's a really good trade to pick up because it just collects all of this sort of stuff. And just puts it in one volume, like all this sort of niche mm. um, stuff that is kind of important to continuity. Like it, or it just it just gives you a lot more of the characters. Like it's all these solo runs. Mm. Um, yeah, that's really nice. So I'd highly recommend everything. Yeah. yeah, everything from uh, after Power Man and Iron Fist, and um, before Immortal Iron Fist. Yeah. So the only mm-hmm. thing that I hope that that they added onto here is when um, he got. Uh, uh, he was brought back in Namor, so I I oh. wish they had put that in. I even, agree, but I really you know, find just it a hard few to issues. Read those issues. That has... they're super important, but they're really ugly. So that has its own collection. For me, um, and Namor, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Iron Fist coming back with Namor and like in the Namor pages and stuff that is in Iron Fist: The Book of Changes trade paperback. And it's Interesting. All in there, so they. You said I didn't. That. Neymar? The, the Neymar it, issues? Yeah. No, I, I don't think it's there. I don't think it, so, yeah. Just the, it's just the Marvel Comics Presents uh, issues yeah. that were there. 
Yeah. So and, you, and have, then you have to yeah you have to pick up the name or TPBs or um, huh. the omnibus uh, to get those. Okay. So for me, it's I got, just it's wanted got the name or annual in it. Name or annual. Oh too. yeah, the name or annual. Yeah, that's right. So. I think that's the one that you're referring to. Possibly, yeah. I'll have to, I'll, I haven't read through the trade yet. Because yeah, so. it's a solo. Yeah, that was a solo. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, those those would be kind of hard to collect, to be honest. You would, unless mm-hmm. they do that thing where they just put in the Iron Fist parts on their own. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. Similar to what they um, would do with the others, uh, where they want to tie um, certain issues to um, uh, a story previous, uh, a previous story, and uh, uh, an upcoming story, and then you just needed those pages in to to fill in the gaps. So, uh, I, I mean, it's going to be weird because you're you're gonna have to start it off with those uh, issues from Neymar in order for this for it to to be done chronologically. But I don't know. I, I'm just a sucker for being a completist or. A, yeah, I mean, uh, no, definitely. I would love to have just just those. Mm. We're pretty close, to be fair. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, like it's a good collection. Better than many characters. Yeah, yeah, no, it's better than Superman, that's for sure. Um, well, he's got a lot of stuff. I was trying to think of characters oh, about yeah. Superman. Well, stuff, the so. but the thing is, <laughs> like, they keep reprinting Death of Superman, but Death of Superman as a yeah, story, yeah, right. <laughs> it works a lot less when it doesn't have like the. Yeah. Con- stuff for context and like mm. they just they printed that stuff that has context when it was initially released but they haven't like they just need to release right. an omnibus with like all the stories that set it up because you know you mm. read death of superman standalone and lex is like a clone with like a mane of red hair and there's a supergirl mm-hmm. who turns into like a puddle when she's punched by doomsday and you don't know what any of these things are if you haven't <laughs> Like, like, um, yeah, yeah. And when the Justice it, League shows up, it's like Maxima, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, and yeah, Blood yeah. a different group. Yeah, yeah, it's like who the hell are these guys? Uh, so, <laughs> you know, um, that's so funny. It's just, it's just a thing. It, it just, it annoys me because it's such a thing that they should. Yeah, just yeah, no, no, it. I totally get. Especially why the Eradicator stuff, it. which is really good. So it's like, anyway. But yeah, um, so yeah, we, we got like a recap of Iron Fist's origin, which interestingly enough doesn't have him being the dragon, but they only have a certain amount of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got a lot to cram in here. Yeah. And his, I mean, that part of his origin isn't actually really that important to the story, so no. I would imagine they're... No, you, you, it, it's, yeah. it's yeah. easy to just assume that he has this power without having to explain it. He basically yeah, it, it, yeah up... it gets mentioned at one point that yeah. he stuck his hands in the dragon's heart. He became the tapestry upon which the UT and the four dragon kings would write their years of learned and knowledge. And it's basically how he That's became a cool the line. artist. Um, so, yeah. And uh, someone wakes him up. Yes, yeah, so they land and he, you know, he's walking off and then he gets a phone call. That's he so gets weird shot at. being woken up just from the like somebody would have woken him up before that. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought well, it was so. interesting when he says it's been he so he arrives in San Francisco and he says, It's been way too long since I spent time in my favorite city. And I was trying that, to that remember when funny. he was in San Francisco. <laughs> Maybe it's Jurgen's favorite. It happened city? Off panel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yeah, maybe he was he hangs out there all when... the time, we just never see it. Mm-hmm. He was there when, um, wasn't he there when Luke challenged him about coming back to life? Wasn't that Chicago? Was it? I thought it was the West Coast, but you're probably right because I, I just be make this it's... stuff up. I've no I mean, idea. it's been a little while since I've read, read that. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why I thought it was the West Coast, but so let's assume you're right because I probably did just make that up. But anyway. Either yeah, way, who knows? You maybe it's just maybe it's mentioned somewhere. It seems to be it, where the superheroes go because Daredevil yeah. lived in San Francisco and yeah. everyone lived in San Francisco. So. Yeah, <laughs> the X-Men went Widow, to San right? Francisco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, they all went there. But yeah, someone calls him on the phone to shoot at him. This is, this is really convoluted. Like, like this is the way that they're hiring him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To like attack him. 
And I guess they're like testing his skills, but it's still it's. Uh... But also, you shouldn't really be trying to hire someone if you don't think their skills are good enough. It's it's you know like. I don't know. They want to make sure that you know, they maintain makes... their secrecy by opening fire and like an airport. I suspect they need. I suspect they need an accident somewhere in the comic. And yeah, this was the, there are uh, screams of that. Like, and then yeah. this guy who is spoiler an undercover shield agent. Um, mm. He's hanging out with Joy, who does not know he's an undercover shield agent. Yeah, I'm spoiling everything as we go, otherwise it's going to be he's too like, hard uh, to he's, like, and he's, he has all these stupid word affectations. Yeah. And Joy's in this, like, Ferrari? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, I love the, um, the monograph, uh, the license plate. I Joy love forever license plate. Forever, forever, yeah. Styling. <laughs> And Joy's like, come on, get in the car, and Danny's like, oh, this bitch, and it's like, whoa. Uh, yeah, but he gets in the car, but he's like really, uh, what's the word, mistrusting of her. Um, he, like, yeah. She's like not someone he wanted to see. Yeah. Um, because Joy Meacham is the daughter of Harold Meacham, and Joy had it in for Danny for a while and tried to kill him as Iron Fist um, with her creepy uncle Ward. And... Uh, anyway, that was a thing that we've already covered. But yeah, they're getting chased yeah. by a helicopter. Uh, mm -hmm. The cars following them with guns and the vroom driving, and it's it's, it's like Grand Theft Auto. It's a huge chase. Um, and you know, the, Danny's telling Joy how to do some tricks with the car to get the cars cool. to fall off, and it right. blows up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just explodes. Yeah, this is it's a pretty good action scene. Action sequence. It is. Like it's, a, it's it's very cinematic. Yeah, it's like it's like a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> it, <laughs> it feels like it's from... cars exploding. It's, it's like Magnum PI because Danny's dressed like yeah. it's the '80s, and they're in this car that looks like it's from yeah. the '80s. I mean, the uh, best thing is definitely how quickly he gets his costume on when we know yeah. it's been in his suitcase. It's just like <laughs> you're sitting in a car with two two other people. And somehow, yeah. by the time you leave the car, you're in your skin tight outfit. Yeah, like, and it's undress. clearly not. <laughs> yeah, that's clearly not under your other clothes, right? So it just, again, hand wave, very cinematic. It's funny because it, it usually mm -hmm. is under his other clothes, which we make fun of. Right, like, well, right. Maybe that makes that, more that, sense. The one time <laughs> but they not, made a yeah. specific point of it not being because of the airport joke. Yeah. <laughs> and so he. He puts on a seat, he jumps out of the car, and he really kicks the body, like, kicks through the windshield, yeah, and then that car goes off the road. It doesn't explode. Yeah. But, you know, he's swinging off trees, karate chopping people, and then you know, a mimesterious figure in the shadows. It's Scimitar, seeing him again. Um, I know. For, for two seconds. Well, he doesn't have that many villains <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, I like seeing Scimitar again. And yeah. I, I had a little cheer. And Iron Fist yeah, is, I, you know, go on. I, I, I was going to say, I, I love this fight because it's so short. Scimitar, yeah. Yeah. You know, Scimitar shows up all dramatic and Danny's like, nope, <laughs> you're still not good enough to beat me. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still annoyed and I'm just going to snap you, Scimitar, and there where yeah. will you be? You know? He does cut no, it short with the Iron Fist, though, because I mean, he's losing, he's sloppy. You know, he got hit when he shouldn't have by Scimitar. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, but the yeah, Iron Fist so, okay, is the equalizer. You're not, yeah, you're not going to be part of my rogues gallery anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's the last time you can appear. Bring back <laughs> El Aguila. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if I write the story, we can bring him back, sure. Um, may or may not end with his demise. Or start with his demise. But um, uh, the Iron Fist is the equalizer because Sibitar is using a sword. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's fair. And, um, Shield Man smokes a cigar, which Danny grabs and crushes in his hand, and he's like, I abhor smoking. And this actually comes back later. This is when Danny, this is yeah. how Danny figures out he's an agent of Shield, because mm. he recognizes the cigar as the Nick Fury, one's Nick Fury. Which is just very funny, because that, because, yeah. I mean, like, of course, nobody else would smoke them but Agent's job, but it is very funny. <laughs> Give him props. Yeah. His senses are good. Who and knew then, he abhorred smoking before now? 
And then yeah. Conal comes out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shad yeah, and Death Sting are Conal and Miranda. Um, but he's like, Conal's dressed up in this other costume for some reason. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. like a really bad costume as well. Uh, this is not good. <laughs> it's like a, a really Sorry, bad man. Etrigan fancy dress shop kind of. <laughs> yeah. Etrigan melted from the a little store. bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Dollar store. Uh, thing. <laughs> Danny thinks Joy is behind this whole thing. He's constantly saying, you're behind this, you're behind this. And she's like, it's not me, it's not me. Because, you know, why the hell is she there? Which was what I was wondering for a lot of it. And it turns out she's <laughs> there because uh, she just happened to be going here for her own business thing. But uh, her shield agent is watching Danny. So he sort of... They she had planted someone with Joy so they could keep an eye on Danny. Uh, I'm assuming they have other plants elsewhere to keep an eye on Danny as well. Um, and he yeah, sort okay. of influenced events so that they would end up where Danny was going on the airport. And the reason they're watching Danny is because they know they figure that he he's on the list of people that would be contacted to steal the Scorpio key. Did you get all that, kids? should read this instead um <laughs> don't don't ever let's never get into a discussion about this key and where or where, where it might be now because that's <laughs> yeah. okay. would be a terrible mistake but yes yeah, yeah. so we're going off to get the scorpio key. so the villain uh is like you're gonna get this key you're gonna rob this key for us and he's like no i'm not shut up and then he <laughs> the villain gives danny a photo of his sister tied up with a gun to her head he's like impossible my sister alive and it's funny because miranda is obviously one of the bad guys so she's in on this so this picture was just taken like they set up this and miranda's like make sure mm. i'm in my underwear for my brother to look at me yeah i want to look really uh, promiscuous you know. for my brother he's gonna he's recognize me <laughs> Recognize me by not wearing any clothes. That's yeah. terrible, terrible <laughs> allegation. <laughs> and yeah, we go. That's the end of issue one, issue two, which is a cool cover. It might probably my favourite cover yeah. of the three. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, and he's that's fighting really Rekka well. on the side, right? Which is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because in the yeah. first issue, he was fighting Scimitar on the side. So in this issue, I was like, oh, he's going to be fighting Rekka in this issue, but he's not. Just, I do really like those these these little side. I think those are fun. Yeah. I think it's sad yeah. that more often. Have, yeah. yeah. So I really like the opening page, all the puzzle pieces. Yeah. Yes. I think it's really. Cool. I really like that. They, yeah. They, yeah. Yes. In Very the fold good. remains a stupid name, but the uh-huh. jigsaw at the beginning. <laughs> is great. You still get yeah. it for two more issues. <laughs> yeah. And we keep seeing Miranda in her own <laughs> <laughs> it would be like uh, it wouldn't be funny if like she wasn't like if she was an actual hostage it would make more sense but she's not yeah. like she set up this so this is weird but anyway um, <laughs> yeah. Sherrod uh, yeah Danny's not 100% sure if it's his sister or not but he reckons it is uh, but that's how they get him to well actually he fights him first they have a nifty little fight uh, where Danny actually gets the upper hand pretty quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, Sherrod is Colonel, wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And, but uh, Scimitar grabs Joy, who's like the one civilian in this entire mess. <laughs> like, she's the <laughs> yeah. only person here who's not, like, in on it or some or something, besides Danny, I guess. Um, and you know, Danny's got to try her best psychology, and they're like, you know, we'll kill her if you don't take the Scorpio kill, and he's like, you know, do it. I don't care. And then they take her anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was bluff didn't really work. But he has 24 hours to decide if he'll do the heist or not. Which is cool. I really like the premise of Iron Fist having to like do a villainous thing, like break in and yeah, steal yeah, this key to mm-hmm. so Joy and Miranda don't get killed. Um, and it is yeah. true that if you're going to hit hire a hero for it, he's like uniquely qualified for some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, he's just very good at, at being quiet and yes. sneaking around and stuff. And just then, believe. obviously, the fighting. 
there's probably more people that are qualified, but like again, considering the identity of these villains, it makes sense that he they yeah. would. I mean, there's him. definitely more mm. people more qualified, but I think he does have an interesting set of skills, not necessarily his power. Definitely. Like yeah. the um, just the because all the martial arts means he can move very quietly. He doesn't yeah. need to carry a weapon with him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So like, it, it's point. an interesting choice. They've made a point in the past how Iron Fist is, you know, a master of ninjutsu and he could do all the ninja things. So, yeah. but uh, Joy's friend is flying him on his plane, or Joy's plane, probably Joy's plane actually, but um, Joy's plane that he flies. I don't know, so his plane. But yeah, mm-hmm. they they're sort of looking into the Scorpio key and they got all these goon bags like who have tried to steal the key but died. Um, oh, and we get the background of mm-hmm. the Scorpio key. Shockingly. It was in the hands of Scorpio that it was originated, which I believe is Nick Fury's brother, right? I don't genuinely remember, but that sounds right. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there was I a, just, a, a. I remember trying series? to track it before, and it was very complicated. So yeah. yeah I think there was a mini series of um, um, Nick Fury, the, the Scorpio Key, or something. Yeah, yeah I think so as well. Yeah, yeah, from there was the some 80s. Kind of Avengers series at one point, but that might have been. I think it was much earlier on. So I haven't read more of the recent things with it. But the the latest wielder of the Scorpio key was incarcerated uh, after the events of Punisher 7, which means it probably wasn't Punisher himself who stopped him, because he'd be dead otherwise. So uh, it looks like (laughs) Nick Fury who stopped him. Yeah, Um, it was. Mm. But yeah, so basically the Scorpio key is a really super powerful cosmic energy weapon. And, you know, if, if someone gets it, Really bad, bad things can happen. You know, they like world it's super powerful threats. Yes, so don't want bad guys to have it. But Danny has no choice, and we get a bit of a flashback to Iron Fist Two, where the story of Colonel and Miranda, how they sort of help him against those thugs, and then he tries yeah. to stop them from leaving Kunlun because mm-hmm. he's convinced it'll be better. Connor's banished for teaching women. Yes. Yeah. Well, well um, it's, so, mm-hmm. and I've I've always loved this detail. They're not banished. They're um, sentenced to have their memories erased and can yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah lose who, their identity. So they run away. Mm-hmm. And I've always thought that was a really yeah. interesting thing that that would be a punishment Kung would have. I thought that was a, kind of that kind of stuck mm-hmm. out as a weird bit of world building. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So this is exciting because we haven't seen these characters at all. Since Iron Fist, too. no, it so was really, really weird. Cool. Like they they got shown and referenced a couple of times, and yeah, that we just haven't seen them since. Yeah, it's a really smart dive because like um, it's such a comic ending for them. Like that when you read it in a comic nowadays, you almost immediately think, when are they going to come back, right? Yeah. Um, and it's really so it's like it's kind of cool to see it play out much slower in the past and like I don't think I genuinely when I was reading this thought that we would see them again like it was like such a mm. pull that it's yeah. cool yeah no it's good because it is a bit of a like uh, they could I mean if they never showed up again it would be very easy to assume that they died but um, mm-hmm. you know like bringing them back is perfectly viable to sort of tie that up as well or yeah. explore it a bit more um, yeah. They don't and actually you mention... think, yeah, and don't, you don't think uh, that uh, she would ever come back because in Power Man and Iron Fist number seventy-five, um, he kind of confirmed that she was dead uh, because he saw bones yeah. where yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, where Joy mm-hmm. was body was supposed to be. So um, yeah, no, nobody thought he'd be coming back alive. I mean, that was before um, Heroes. Would come back from the dead all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. They. I guess like I mean you could explain that too by like the pyrolithy basically just regenerated them into yeah. You know mm. things because like the the pyrolithy are the ones who are using them to get this key. I mean it's kind of even said at the end where he's like I'm not even sure if she was just a pod person being right. Know, yeah. Being control and and I think that's kind of it like you don't really. You're never 100% sure. No. Yeah. In this yeah, which is anyway. a really interesting, interesting. It's a really thing. interesting, like, kind of drop in there that even he's kind of 
doubting I mean, I kind of like the evolution of Danny where he can actually be like skeptical of these things like for all my joking about yeah. him at the airport like and mm. how naive he is when he first arrives and he's with Luke it is kind of interesting in these three issues to see like he's very skeptical about joy he's very skeptical you know right from the beginning he's not sure if it's really Miranda mm. like so yeah. he's, he's there's a bit of growth there and I do like that he specifically mentions um that he did something that he he learned from Luke about about bluffing that he he specifically mentions mm-hmm. that as Luke being an influence on yeah why he yeah, takes this yeah. tack which is neat yeah um they interestingly don't actually mention the well not interestingly but they don't mention the the why they were leaving oh wait no they do never mind yeah they don't mention the mind wipe thing. No, no they, they, there are a few no, details no. that they get slightly wrong or that they they um, kind of gloss over in this, which is fine. You know, there's a lot of information. There's already a lot of text, so, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is like the recap for people who haven't read it or haven't read it in like, you know, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, so we get a really, yeah, we get the really cool break in sequence, which I won't really go into detail describing. Um but yeah, Daddy breaks in to get the Scorpio key, and there's all sorts of cool sequences, and he ends up beating up like every single employee. <laughs> I love, yeah, I love the... this whole sequence because it's yeah. just showcasing showcasing how incredibly skilled Danny is, and I yeah. cherish that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, seventy was it seventy eight Shield agents in uh, eighty seven, uh, eighty no eighty eight. Is 87, um, in seven minutes. and then the guy with the gun comes up, and that's the last yeah, one. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Danny has to yeah. throw a gun at his head to stop him. <laughs> Which is uh, hilarious. Yeah. In, in, <laughs> in almost almost seven minutes. So it's really, really impressive and cool. Which means the stealth portion didn't go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> initially he was being stealthy and hanging off the ceiling and stuff, and then they just... They're like, hey, who's that guy they, on they, the they ceiling in green and yellow <laughs> spandex? Uh <laughs> Just like us. <laughs> yeah, actually, same same color scheme. Weird. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and, and then Kronen Miranda like, and Connell are watching him. Yeah. Yeah, which weirdly enough, Connell, Colonel, how do you pronounce it? He doesn't really get any characterization of this. No, no. he really doesn't. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I guess char- they're focusing on the familial stuff. So yeah, but yeah. They like, were... He's a character I've always wanted to see more of, and maybe someday we will. Yeah, so I think he's cool. really cool and interesting. And he's fascinated also dead. by him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's fine. He'll get over it. He'll recover. <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, everybody back. <laughs> yeah. Both him and Miranda were established to be his good friends. Right. Um, Kunlun. Right. Um, and I think I think it's really interesting that um, Connell was teaching Miranda to fight without telling Danny. This was just something he was doing. He yeah. was doing with her on their own. I've always thought that was a really interesting thing about his character. And maybe, I'd love to know more yeah. about that. Maybe because I didn't he want to get like... Danny into trouble. <laughs> Or that since Daddy was becoming the Iron Fist and he was like Kundun's golden boy, that Danny might actually be with him. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I've always thought. Yeah, that, that, he, yeah. that he would turn them in or that he would yeah. at least be angry about it. Well, especially as he didn't know Miranda was his sister. Mm. Yeah. At that point. So. Yeah. That's true. But I mean, Daddy, not saying that you should yeah. make you should make uh, allowances for people being your family. On the breaking of rules, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> for most of us, I mean, like more than a friend. Like, I think I'd do as yeah. much for a friend as I would a family member. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a really interesting dynamic there that's never been there explored. Is. That would be, yeah. be really cool to see. I mean, is to it... be honest, they could even go back and do a historical mini about it. Like, I, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need to be mm-hmm. resurrected for that, right? You know? yes. Yeah, yeah. That's on my wish list. I would love. At least a mini series about Danny's childhood and come on. And, I mean, yeah. I think if we're not going to get him thing? back as Iron Fist, we could do some more historical stuff, both with him mm. and Orson. Give yeah, Connor his Orson go. mini as well, Max. Yes. Oh, it's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they can't sell it, we can dream. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, so 
Danny gets the key and there's like a self-destruct sequence. He has 40 seconds to get the key and then run out. I don't know how he runs out in like 10 seconds, but um, that seems fast. a bit crazy to me. He's not the Flash, but uh, he, he uses the Iron Fist to break the barrier that's been killing everyone, uh, um, yeah. which causes him a lot of pain. It's like, sure, but he does get the key. He dives really up at the cool. end. It's like Andor. Yeah, it's oh, a it's really like cool Andor. use of. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Andor, this thing that came out like last year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought this is a really cool use of um, the Iron Fist, kind of in a creative way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Which is always really neat. So yeah. I, I yeah, this whole sequence I just love. I think it's very very cool. It's, it's a really cool sequence. And when he dies, yeah, it really, nice really shows it as well. Yeah, and shows how. Danny can um, absorb energy, uh, yeah. just like he did in his uh, first solo series. Uh, yeah. It's like it's, it's a really good uh, callback to what Chris Claremont did with uh, Danny's powers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so when he dives out, the facility doesn't blow up. But the self-destruct sequence stops, which is good. Yeah. So Daddy goes to hand. Right, because he had all these unconscious people in there. Yeah, I think that's yeah. why they did it, because um, <laughs> they didn't want to have like eighty deaths on him. Um, but yeah. yeah, he goes to the like location where he has to hand it in. Uh, they they mm-hmm. take a plane trip there. We don't really know where it is, but yeah, mm-hmm. he goes to hand it in, and he gives him the key, and then Colonel's. Like Miranda's playing the part of hostage again, and Colonel's in his stupid mask, and Colonel's like, "All right, we have the key. Kill everyone." Which I don't quite <laughs> get the point of this part of the plan. <laughs> like, obviously, he's like aware that Miranda's not going to die in this, but why is he like making? Yeah, I just I don't know. But Danny beats them up, and he takes out Colonel. Who threatens to break Miranda's neck? Miranda elbows him, and then Danny kicks him, and they sort of have a kicks reunion. Him again. It kicks him again. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, but <laughs> this seems to be this seems to be an elaborate ruse just to frame Joy. No, because yeah, Miranda's like, oh, really this horrible lady called reason. Death's thing, and you know, yeah. Danny gives her the key and tells her to go to the boat. Plane, sorry, plane. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, oh, I wouldn't want to lose my brother again. Be careful, blah, blah, blah. And she runs out um, <laughs> wearing the underwear again, by the way. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. Daddy's like hunting through the facility and he finds Death Sting. Death Sting's like, who, what? And he unmasks her. That's <gasps> Joy Meacham. Because they've drugged her and put her I mean, in it's a costume. very tight fitting mask for sure. But it's yeah. a very elaborate yeah. scheme. Like, so it's they, an incredibly elaborate scheme. They, they're like, okay, Danny will give us the key, and then we'll threaten to kill everyone, and then Danny will beat us up, and we'll frame Joy for death sting, and then Miranda, after Danny tells you to go to the plane, I'll take the key, and then we'll run off. It's like, could this not have been accomplished without like <laughs> a bunch of extra steps? Uh, <laughs> you right. could have just taken the key and gone, I'm off. Uh-huh. So. Maybe it was like we have yeah. to get Miranda out as well, but they don't want Miranda to be outed as Death Sting. I don't know. Yeah. It's almost like the writer, like, uh, he really just wanted to have Joy in this and couldn't really yeah. figure out yeah. how to do it. And so he managed to find kind of a convoluted way to put her in the plot. But she I guess it's really another fit. blonde-haired woman to muddy the waters about who's behind it, I guess. Yeah, yeah because you second, show, he, they they show death sting. death sting. Yeah, they showed death sting at the beginning with blonde hair, so they needed uh, somebody to frame who was all, also blonde. Yeah, and so Joy is like a a plot device. Probably yeah, for yeah. That. I'm down for that. Uh, red herring and bring Joy back. It all works for me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm always happy to see Joy. Yes. So. Yeah, Danny is uh, fighting Death Sting on the cover of this issue, mm-hmm. which is a, a good cover. It's the cover with the, the different artist, uh, Pascal Ferry. Yeah. And she's holding yeah. the Scorpio key. Yeah. 
I really like that first panel of like the moon. It reminds me of old Bernie Wrights and Swamp Thing. It's mm-hmm. so Swamp yeah. Thing. It's yeah, amazingly so Swamp Thing. In the colouring, the clouds, it's it really is. And then of course you go straight to the Hyalithi. Hyalithi. <laughs> call them. Yeah. Yeah. We can still call them the plant people. The plant people. Thank you. The plant people. Yeah. This is a very green plant person, but yeah, yes, cool. he's a bit swamp thing <laughs> himself. So yeah. So apparently they're in a bit of trouble. They need the key to like help sustain them, which you know evidently they because they don't get the key at the end, but they don't really have a problem sustaining. No. Maybe there's like maybe this is like a. The plant people vanguard and the other plant people are still in Quinlan. I was yeah, that's what, what I was wondering about is what they're even doing here, or how they got here, or yeah. I mean, I guess they Very just strange. Yeah, it, it could have been explored more, but I guess those details aren't super important. But at the same time, it's like yeah, they were yeah. had to have come through like the portal and. You know, I would assume that they're here so that they can keep an eye on Miranda and Colonel because they probably don't trust them fully. But yeah, yeah, a really cool uh, splash page as well. And you know, yeah, I like that with the the key. (laughs) Yeah, the key, the key. With Danny's eye. Wow. You are Iron Fist, and the long buried questions and mysteries of a lifetime have exploded, begging answers. Uh, oh, no. there was I like a line how somewhere. in the second half, on the right hand side, he's back to the white eyes again. Though, not gonna forgive that. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> I noticed like from a distance they'll do the white eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah. It does it's like John Byrne. Yeah, how do, how do, how he does it. Um, when it's close it's up, inconsistent. There's a close up on the next page mm. that has them. Yes, but it's just let's yeah. just say it's inconsistent and probably down oh, to. Yeah. Art and color, and yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's an yeah. So. But there's a line I really liked about how a lot of Iron Fist's life is like unanswered questions, and it's so true. There's so many unanswered it questions. It is so true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, uh, I like how Daddy's like, you know, your father murdered my parents. Now you're trying to murder me, and Joy's just like, uh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> just fully out of it, yeah. Because she didn't do it. She's like, I, I don't know how to explain this. Um, they, they drugged me. Like it, it, it sounds completely yeah, insane because it is drugged. completely insane. Like the fact that they drugged her and put her in this costume, and she's like, oh gross, they yeah. didn't dress me to do this. And, right. and again, yeah. I love that she points it out because it's, it's yeah. one of those things that people often don't like. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's kind of gross. They undress mm. me. That that close up of Daddy going enough as he's trying to explain is pretty funny. Yeah, his face is just yeah. up. I think that would work better like, if his eyes. I were love visible. that face. I do as well, but I love his mouth line there. It's just yeah. an amazing. Yeah, you like you could never pull that face, but it's just so evocative. <laughs> yeah, very expressive. <laughs> She's yeah, getting fed up that Daddy is not believing her. <laughs> And then her face turns mm-hmm. into Harold's face, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> and it's really like a, a cinematic uh, experience yeah. when, you know, the way Jackson slash uh, Butch Geese or Geis draws uh, yeah. these panels. Yeah. It's like he's I... a really good storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. And I do really like how. You know, obviously Danny is very upset. He's going through a lot right now. He and he just gets very, very angry, and then he catches himself getting very, very angry and goes, "No, that's dangerous." And he he, he kind of disengages I love quickly. It. I love Rage that. Must line. never overcome it's such, a, it's... such a cool character point. I love that yeah. panel where he's freaking out. He looks like the the Doom guy in that Doom comic. Yeah. Know, that, that meme <laughs> panel where he's like rip and tear, blood and guts. And he's just. And then uh, it needs, it shows why he's different, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he steps away from it. He's like his the moment and his mind have clarity and purpose, but his soul doesn't. So he just needs to like he just needs to unleash some of that rage, and he kicks the absolute shit out of that chair. He kicks it so hard yeah. that it shatters. <laughs> yeah. Just I love like that. How it works. It doesn't work <laughs> like that, but he just shatters this chair with his foot. It's great. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like a, a, a similar experience that he had uh, with Joy's father, where mm-hmm. he's just about ready to kill uh, Harold, mm-hmm. and yet right at the last uh, second he oh, had to stop exactly. himself. Really, yeah. Yeah. so it's it, exactly the same thing that he's going through with Joy. Then yeah, I, know I think that's absolutely intentional. Harold. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice because you can you can trace that character growth from that yeah. moment to this moment mm-hmm. and and how he's going no I, I can't go back to that place with joy um, and the association with the two meachams just so it makes it even better like you know yeah one's mm-hmm. harold one's joy um it is it, it it's it's really small yeah yes it is no it, it's yeah it's really good and joy's kind of like whoa <laughs> after he does that yeah. you wanted to you want to do that <laughs> to my head uh, yeah. i mean that is how you would react, best reaction. Like, <laughs> yeah joy does does a very good job of being kind of an audience stand-in in this comic i mean yeah. he's smashing what a table is that a table he's smashing uh it was a chair yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's, oh, yeah, she's right. like this angry kung yeah, fu so... man with all these muscles. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, she's still trying to convince him. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, so she's doing a, I like this conversation. She is poking holes in like how it's not her, like how stupid it would be if it was actually her. Yeah. Like, do you really <laughs> think right. I'm this mastermind? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Then again, I remember that building with your dad and all those traps, uh, <laughs> and that guy who was in that room for like twenty years. That trained <laughs> me for my trained me for my kids. <laughs> and then yes. our shield agent, who they don't know is a shield agent yet, has been taken out, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we got attacked." And then he's like, "Hang on, when you're attacked, did Miranda do any? Like, what did she do?" And he's like, "Oh, she just screamed." And then Danny knows that, okay, she's in on it because she would have fought back. She would have fought you, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, yeah, like, she's like, oh, she wouldn't have just stood there while, you know, her ally was attacked, so. Uh-huh. And he finally believes them. Mm-hmm. And do we get another flashback, which, like, fully gives us the rest of the story? And, yeah, you know, he tells them that, and I like that it's green tinge because now we're talking plant people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> Daddy points out the cigar, and the guy's like, "You're good, kid. Real good." <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Nick Fury just got him addicted to those cigars. Like, so yeah. this this very and make sure cigar. everyone around him only smokes them. Yeah, Tom Tom Dugan. Dumb Dumb's probably like that. Cigar. Too. Yeah, oh, well, sure. I'm, yeah, Dumb Dumb probably is a cigar. Well, apparently it's an extremely unique brand of cigar. So I'm he's right. only encountered it once before. Mm. I like how he's like, people like you were watched, which makes sense. You have like this yeah. kung fu dragon billionaire, like, right, around. exactly. He's going to be watched it by like the government. Um, sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joy slaps him, which I thought was funny when she finds out, because she's just been, yeah. like, a dupe in this whole thing. She's been dragged along and, like, kidnapped and, you know. Yeah, yeah she's her in the bad slap. Uh, I, I, this line made me laugh where she's like, do you want to kill him or should I? And Danny goes, the time for sardonic humour is over. <laughs> 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 which is true yeah no i yeah. love that line a lot for various reasons but yeah <laughs> um especially how dramatic he delivered it like who says that the time for your sardonic humor is over <laughs> now it's yeah. time to fight <laughs> <laughs> and we cut to plant people with joy no not joy oh my god um <laughs> moran's own colonel i'm getting you know the first time i re- ever read this i was like What's going on? <laughs> yeah, 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 you have to kind of read it to get it to go yeah. back and read it. Because it's yeah, with like Miranda and 
And it, when I reread it, though, I couldn't remember if Death Sting... Like, I'm like, oh yeah, Death Sting is Miranda. I remember that much. And then I'm like, wait a minute, Joy's in the costume? Mm-hmm. Oh, she was drugged. <laughs> but the first yeah, time yeah, reading it, I'm like, that. is that Joy in that yeah. costume? But yeah. Um, so they're doing the exchange. They're like, you're going to restore us to proper life, and then we'll give you the key. And the plant person's like, no, give me the key now, otherwise it's off. Mm-hmm. And you know you'll be screwed if you kill me. And then Danny, uh, Shield Man, and Joy, <laughs> Joy, who probably shouldn't <laughs> be coming here, come in on <laughs> hang gliders. <laughs> and even Joy is like, why did I insist on tagging along? Yeah, which is a good <laughs> point. Why did she? Yeah, because the sh- Malik, the Shield guy, he's like, oh, I don't have to play Stooge anymore. I can. Get him yeah, I can like go have a rest. <laughs> yeah, and Danny kicks kicks the shield, the current headed shield man. No, current headed plant man. Um, he looks like a, just the way his head. He's like a garden gnome. I don't he know. Yeah, I, kind of, I I keep funny. thinking him as Mister McPixlick. Yeah, how he talks as well. Oh, he does geez. look like that at some point, I feel like. Anyway, um... But I didn't want to tell you that because I thought you'd mock me, so I'm kind no, of glad no, you just no. went, oh! It's no, like I can see it. He does. But, uh... Yeah, everyone starts fighting. Um, you know, <laughs> Death Sting takes care of the shield guy pretty easily. Joy awkwardly lands on, uh, Connell. Colonel. Connell, yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. I don't like saying Connell because it sounds too much like Connor. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> that's that's fair. Like we get this another little tiny continuity nod for people who know Danny gets threatened to get stuck back in one of the pods, and he says, "No, never again." Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. people who've read the end of Power Man Iron Fist know. He was or a plant person. Read Namor and know yeah. what that's referencing. Yeah. Yeah, though yeah. no, that was a really cool. Like again. And, what really surprised me is because I don't think Dan Jurgens has written any other Iron Fist. So, no, yeah, like, so either he's a fan... a real fan of it, though. He, he yeah. seems, he's a fan I or he put so. in a lot of research. Like, a lot yeah. of yeah. research. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. So, yeah. And so... If you get the chance to, to interview him, that would be great to know how he came up with the story, especially because he's a DC guy, uh, mostly. So like for I, him to have, yeah. you know, uh, all of these, uh, nods to, uh, Iron Fist's past is, uh, is very impressive. I feel like I've trashed him too much to get him on the podcast. <laughs> well, because there was a point where Ray asked him to come on, and he sent like a like a response which felt kind of rude. So I just got angry, and I was like, "Yeah, whatever. He's not even oh, that good." <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah. Like again, like he's just uh, quite funny. What a huge fan of his Superman writing, but uh, I don't have anything against him personally, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. And Superman Alien was awesome. So. Mm. That's his best Superman story, folks, is the Superman and Alien crossover. Mm, okay. True. But um, kind of similar to this, actually, funnily enough. Uh, he finds his cousin, Kara, and then it has an ending where, like, um, you know, she could either be dead or alive. How oh, interesting. And mm-hmm. she's, like, kind of doomed anyway. Uh, it's so like it. It is kind of similar to this, which is interesting. But anyway, um, yeah. and they're both blonde. But <laughs> Daddy starts. I mean, to, to be fair, a lot, a lot of comic book women are blonde. That is true. That's true. Yeah, because mm. it's a good color. Very true. Karen Page. That's a lot of redheads as well. Sue Storm. Yeah. Not that they're ever redheaded in live action. I mean, holy crap. Then, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, even Guy Gardner's apparently like not too how, red-headed in live action. How Jeez. hard is it? Uh, there are no real redheads in real life, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> apparently, right. It's, it's it's all fake. It's all made up for the comics. I and the ones so they the, do have, the they then dye their hair in... other colours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that Black Widow comes in Daredevil season four, born again and again for um, 
and but she'll be like she'll have a Russian accent and she won't be Scarlett Johansson. She'll be like, I'm the real Black Widow and <laughs> all will be well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh Yeah, so they she has the key, Miranda, and they start fighting and Danny's like, Why did you call me brother? You know? And she yeah. goes, isn't it obvious? Mm. And then he says, given your delay, yes. And he kicks the key out of her hand. <laughs> and <Yeah>. she clarifies <laughs> She clarifies their family tree a little bit. She's like, we have the same father, not the same mother, which checks out because... I mean, obviously, yeah. You know, with Wendell's yeah. backstory is a whole other thing. Um, yeah, that's... It's, love it's, interest. It's, it's mm-hmm. a, yeah. Yeah. Before he, he met Danny's mother, at least. Brenda. Mm-hmm. Yes. She's blonde, too. Brenda. Look, I love Living Weapon, but Brenda was an unnecessary blonde addition to the catalogue of yeah. angry blonde women in Iron Fist comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's like, abandon the Hyalithi, let me help you. I know Doctor Strange. He doesn't say that last part, but... He yeah. should. Um, yeah. <laughs> Doctor Strange, Reed Richards, Tony Stark, I know the greatest minds on this planet. We'll figure out right. how to do this. They can help you. Yeah. <laughs> But the key is needed to save their people. Without the unique sustenance, they'll die. And Danny's like, well, if you're freed, we'll be, like, eaten by you. So, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cool. He doesn't really have any hesitation. He's like, if these, if these planet people are genocided, that's probably a good thing um, in his mind. So, and to be honest, they are, like, they have understandable grief at Kunlun, I suppose, for chopping down a little part of their forest. But, um yeah. Like, they are evil plant people. Like, every time we've seen them, they're just evil plant people that want to eat everyone. Mm-hmm. So, mm. you know. Yeah, they've. that's literally just... That's them. Evil I guess no one's man. tried to set up, like, peace talks with them, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, well, that's the sense that I've gotten, is that it's, um, you know, Kunlun has just tried to wipe them out, and so they, they're they just like, yeah. screw yeah. you, we're going to But we're they don't, they the don't go and... They don't seem to, like... I think yeah, the, the, like yeah, no there's one no has diplomatic the, the, the interacted with them. Like I agree, couldn't have yeah. treated them terribly, and mm. uh, there's there's a reason why you react like that to people who've been trying to wipe you out. Yeah, but, I mean they they also may have tried. They also may have treated Kunlun terribly. It's you know. true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, they, that's another part the of the ones... story I'd love to see more of. Yeah. yeah and they're the ones who crash landed on their territory. Uh, the yeah. Kunlunians. Yeah. Uh, and so they, it's probably, you, you, you know, they yeah. can't resolve that. Yeah. Boy, I really wish we got that. Uh, I know we got a little bit of it in Contagion, but um, the the Ed mm. Brisson Hyalithi oh, oh, God that would have followed. God, oh, God. yeah, Love I wanted the... that so bad. So angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to open the old one. So much. So about Heart of the Dragon. <laughs> So, <laughs> no. Connell, Colonel, man, is like, Danny's not going to stop us because if the Hyalithi die, we die too. Um, when the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, you know, says, I'll go help Danny. But um, to clarify that, he started the sentence with, if Rand knew what the stakes were, he would not stop us. I sort of said that in an odd order. But... Um, yeah, they say they were in prison in those pods for years. We weren't quite dead, but we weren't alive. Uh, again, so they could have been skeletons still, but um, or they could be pod people as well. Yeah. Is the other thing. Mm-hmm. So. I really like this panel um, of Miranda with kind of the the key slightly in front of her face. It's a really nice depiction of her face, and she yeah. looks mm-hmm. very kind of sad and contemplative. Yeah, it's really nice. What's I wonder what the I wonder what's with the costumes. I guess they had to stay anonymous, but they're just yeah like, yeah I guess I guess they yeah. just design cool costumes mm. for them and the, they're yeah. like oh everyone yeah. here dresses in weird spandex. We'll do that to blend in. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's like what a couple of days without their special chemicals, they die. So yeah, uh, mm, she, pretty bad. She, she makes the choice. She chooses to. Stop the Hyalithi and save Danny, mm-hmm. um, yeah. which will kill both her and Colonel. Um, 
and she says, I'm sorry, Colonel, far better to act human than be human. And, like, she just lights everything on fire. And Danny sees a uh, uh, blonde lady in trouble, and he goes, Miranda, and then it's Joy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We were all getting a bit confused at that point. Though. Yeah, Joy's like, Joy <laughs> so hasn't popped up since like the start of the yeah. fight, and she's just like wiped out in this fire, like because she shouldn't be there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Shield Man gets the key, then they run away, and they're sort of going through the rubble, and uh, the Hyalithi bodies are there, and Colonel's body is there too. Yeah. Um, Poor guy. But no, Miranda. Um, and this is, yeah, where you mentioned Rebecca who points out, you know, if she really was Miranda and not a pod-generated copy mm-hmm. pod people. Yeah. I mean, they're always clinging on to a little bit of, I hope this, what I just saw happen didn't happen, but I just yeah. think it's an interesting sort of sign is that at one point that he just would have believed everything. And, and this is like, it kind of, it kind of mirrors the start of the mini where he's doubtful about Joy. So, yeah. kind of cool. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, but she's she's sorry for him, and she's like, is there anything I can do? And then the S.H.I.E.L.D. guy's like, oh, beers are on me. We got the key back. One run for the guys, and Danny goes, not tonight, Malik. Not ever. <sighs> Hours before, you left New York to be alone, to separate yourself from others. How ironic. You end the day feeling isolated and more alone than you ever thought possible. Epilogue. And in the epilogue, we have... Um, this is narrated by Danny in second person, of course. Uh, we have Miranda on a boat, picked up with a bunch of other people. And Danny's like, oh, your sister might have survived. She might have escaped. Mm-hmm. A happy thought. Fingers but, crossed. A happy thought, but one no doubt rooted in fantasy. Finn. So it leaves it ambiguous if Danny's imagining that That's... ending. or yeah. um, Which is, I think, a really good ending. And I really liked mm-hmm. this yeah. book. And I used to think, like, yeah. I read this first time. I was like, oh, this is okay. It's nothing special. But I'm like, you know, this is actually great. And I talked to Rebecca before. I'm like, yeah. especially, like, by Iron Fist standards, this is now a great story. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it <laughs> yeah. has Iron him. Iron Fist standards, yeah. <laughs> it has him in character. It has him doing cool stuff. Mm. It has him, you know. Uh, Winning. Well, building yeah. up mm. on, like, previously yeah, established yeah. stuff. Uh, like an interesting story and characters we like seeing and you know a good ending so yeah i think it's good i think it's just again it just suffers if you're not super familiar with it with the lore because it's it's very muddled like with joy and i think and... I, well, either that or i think it needs the sort of two reads yeah you know mm-hmm. like one read so you know who's pretending to be who yeah the next yeah. read like um to sort of really get all the the bits about it. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's also the aspect of whether you're reading for the plot versus whether you're reading for the character stuff. Because the plot, yeah. and we, you know, the plot is a bit convoluted. It doesn't always make 100% sense. But that's not really the strength of this series. The strength of the series is those character moments. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a very very big Miranda fan, in the sense yeah. that I find her fascinating and would love to see more of her. And mm-hmm. so I love this series for, for that. Um, and so we've ended up in this kind of kind of tragic or at least frustrating or um, kind of heartbreaking situation, I guess, where um, we have Miranda like, always just showing up for about two seconds. Danny mentions yeah. um, that, you know, a sister found and lost, you know, in mm-hmm. the same day, which is exactly what happened during her first quote unquote death. Yeah. Um when yeah. he only found out she was his sister as she was as he was losing her. Yeah. yeah. And then she comes back very, very briefly here. And then she comes back again in the prison mm-hmm. run. They have a mm-hmm. moment together and then the run gets cancelled. So it's always yeah. just this kind of this relationship that they never get to explore. Yeah. That they they get never get to spend then... time with each other really. Um I mean, so that would be a good yeah. thing to do while you're not Iron Fist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. 
I, I mean, imagine, with, who's, uh, imagine who would, uh, you know, uh, would even remember, uh, in which writer would remember, uh, all of this, uh, all of the bits and pieces of Miranda's story. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. much, but you have something to go on as a, as a story. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, especially yeah, now, easily. yeah, that he's uh, he's uh, he's not Iron Fist anymore, so uh, yeah, he, he should know, have... he should be spending time with her. Yeah, and and particularly since I mean she's she is officially back. We haven't seen her since the end of Bruce's yeah. run, but she's around, yeah, she's around somewhere. She's alive. she's alive. Yeah, it's the perfect opportunity yeah. to do more with her. I, mean, I wonder if uh, Chris Cla- Yeah, what if Chris Claremont? Uh, does something I mean, that. that would be cool, but I think the fact he's got Wolverine in there might mean that's not going to happen, but it would be... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think... Would I, mean, nice. I, mean, I would want no, her to no, have a I mean, it could still happen, I just think that... I think you're right, I think he, it's more likely to be a story with Wolverine that he didn't get to tell. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be awesome. Oh, I just looked at the art properly for the ending. Oh, okay, they're, they're, they're carrying her, so that uh, the ending implies yeah. that she was washed out to sea. After the explosion. Yeah. Okay, that makes yes. a bit more sense. So, yeah. uh, I assumed that she was on, like, a boat of survivors for something, and I didn't really think what survivors, anyway. That's just me not paying attention. Um, yeah, I guess we go uh, that, like, either... Because Miranda does die at some point. Yeah. Like, she dies and yeah. she ends up in, um, hell. In hell. And, yeah. <laughs> you know... In the Brisson run, yeah. She either... Like she either dies here, or she just dies some point after this. And I guess like it would make sense for or, her to die after this if she didn't have the unless uh, unless this isn't actually again unless this is a pod person and she did actually die back mm. in Kunlun mm. and then found what he thought was her body. So I yeah, like I like how think, it's unclear. I would like to think this is actually her because this gives her character another story, and it's not a pod person. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that is also viable. Yeah. Well, no, I guess. Well, no, I guess it would make th- because she's death sting when she shows up in Brisson's run, and if this wasn't her, uh, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess she, this true. does have to be her. Yeah. So yeah, she, she. Yeah, maybe she got hit by a bus later on. <laughs> 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 that would suck. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Brisson didn't uh, spend time talking about that anyway. <laughs> no, so yeah, that, that was that one probably thing happened. I was... Yeah, no, that was something I wondered about when she showed up in Brisson's run was, wait a minute, I thought she actually survived, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess this definitely left it ambiguous enough where you could go with the she died take. Yeah. So, and clearly, like, Brisson read this if she was death steam, so. Yeah. Yeah. Poor, poor Colonel, though. He's gone. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. He's really gone. Low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I, God, I really enjoyed the hell out of this. I, mm. I mean, yeah, it was I did too. Good, and it was, you know, had those emotional beats too, and I, I enjoyed it a lot more than the Heroes for Hire series taking place at the same time. <laughs> Which is like well, it's just so heavily entrenched. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an Iron Fist story yeah. with mm-hmm. deep cut Iron Fist characters, fully embedded in you know. It's just this, yeah. This is this is what we're this is what we want. Um, well, look, and yeah, yeah, I I love this series. It's really fun to talk about it with you guys. We gotta face the fact yeah, that I'm... Master is nonsense. Um, yeah. I just like yeah. I. <laughs> I gave him a chance that I, I was like, I was liking him for the time, but just looking back, I just think he's nonsense. He's just like a lame villain. With stupid helmet. Well, there are some, there are some, there are some fun issues coming up in Heroes for Hire. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I like bits of Heroes mm-hmm. for Hire. Just, there's something so condensed about this in three issues yeah. that we're yeah. clearly going to like relate, you know, like want to read more yeah. than the Heroes for Hire full run. But I yeah. think this is just such a nice little concentrated bit of, of lore and story and the art's decent. And I just thought it was well written yeah. as well. Like, I thought Dan yeah, Jones yeah. did a good job. Um, you know, it was just... Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... 
I think, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a, I, I think it's a three issue mini rather than, um, six or 12 because, uh, it, it's just supposed to be a, a break from Heroes for Hire for him. Yeah. For Danny. Yeah. So for it to be a 12 issue or six issue run would be, um, uh, uh, quite a stretch for them, especially since he's not a major character like Spider-Man who can, you know, they can play yeah, around with him with, with so many, you know, different teams, oh, three it's different books and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. it, it would have been great. But I understand why they chose a three issue mini rather than a, a longer one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but at least, at least, you know, at least we got the it. Previous one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But an issue, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, I think the length is fine as well. I guess if I was like, if I was God and I could choose it to be a certain length, I would say like four issues would be more than mm. fine. Oh yeah, story. yeah, four issues would be great. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add about it? I don't think so. I can't yeah, go back it. Over I kind of want to read those damnations. I think this is good. Again now. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. yes. Yeah. For recreational purposes, you know. Uh, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I was just rereading them the, the other day. They're so good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to wonder if um, if Brisson's run uh, lasted at least a year or two longer, if uh, we'd get more of Miranda. We and, would, yeah. Uh, I talked to him at New York Comic Con um, oh. that year, and I, yeah, I told him how much I loved it, and and yeah, he 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 definitely had more plans for her, um, so it's frustrating. Oh, I have to dig bad. out. I have to dig out those comics at some point because I I think I might be seeing Mike Perkins again. I'm gonna cry. No. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> plant people, yeah. Miranda. Plant people. Yeah. You know, just Connell. Sparrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love Sparrow. Jeez. <sighs> Sparrow. Oh, so uh, Danny uh, I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I just remembered um, doing a post about Danny's family and how um, all of them are practically uh, martial artists and experts yeah. at that. So you've got Danny, yeah. you've got Miranda, you've got um, Danny's yeah. dad, who uh, would have been an Iron Fist. And then his yeah. mom, who was a, a trained martial artist after she passed away. Yeah. Um, uh, was she? You know. Yeah. In, uh, yeah, she, beca- she became. In, uh, a... Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Yeah, uh, she became. Oh, a, a, I forgot a about that already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just it. read that. Um, <laughs> you and Rebecca. Oh, <laughs> well, because that that was like uh, that was one of those batshit insane sort of like. That was pretty insane. 70s kind of like, <laughs> let's just bring back this yes. dead character. In a great uh, way, but pretty insane. It was so yeah. cool, though. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, and the fact that she's she's so good that she could beat up Danny. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she, she's yeah. a, yeah, uh, look, I, I a badass family. I wasn't on board with the mother coming back and being like a ninja. That was I think it's uh, Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit <laughs> over the top. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I but cool. in, in the very, yeah, deadly, I, 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 lo- I there's a lot I really loved about Deadly Hands of Kung Fu though. Um, it's it's such yeah. a such a difference to read. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming on. Um, feel free to plug your various things. Let's start with you, Emma. What What are you? Oh, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for. Oh, sorry. Guys. No, no. I was just like, what, what, what is your stuff? What are you doing at the moment? Yes. Um, so I am continuing, as always, to blog about Iron Fist on um, bookoftheironfist.tumblr.com. So you can check me out there. Cool. Very well. Yeah. Arma. Yeah. So um, again, you can find me at. Uh, I am Iron Fist or I am Iron Fist 23, depending on which uh, social media p- platform you're referring to. Um, I have a, an upcoming blog. Uh, I haven't started it yet, but I was I wanted to delve into the different um, Iron Fist corner boxes 
because I love mm-hmm. corner boxes and uh, it's very nostalgic for a lot of people. So I think that would be an interesting piece. So I already took screenshots and even photos of um, uh, the different ones. And, you know, believe it or not, there's there's actually more than 10 Iron Fist um, uh, corner boxes over the years. And I have a couple of interviews with uh, Iron Fist creators that I haven't published yet. So uh, I'm going to be um, going through my list over the next few months. So it's an Iron Fist 50th anniversary um, special in a sense and throughout uh, for the entire year in my blog. So I have those interviews lined up. So I just need to space them out properly so it's not. Just uh, all interviews, so we've got uh, other uh, interesting topics uh, that we can talk about uh, on Iron Fist. Cool. Awesome. And I'm I'm the only one not straying from Iron Fist. I we have just what reached the end of the DCAU uh, yeah. as it currently is. So uh, we're just finished part two of uh was it justice league crisis on infinite earths yeah uh waiting for uh part three and then which comes out later this month. uh the first film yes the second film not so much it'll be interesting to see what happens with the third and then we're still debating what happens with things like watchmen that aren't due out till next year <laughs> but essentially the podcast kind of sunsetting and Moon Knights, uh, the Into the Night Moon Knight podcast, we have been just doing the recent issues. So we've just done uh, Vengeance of the Moon Knight 6, 7, which everyone came out last week, and discussed the implications of Blood Hunt 4. Uh, so I will be recording again tomorrow. So it's uh, unfortunately Moon. Knight, I mean, I love it, but Moon Knight has become one of those characters that started to get dropped into things to help sales. So there's a lot more oh, uh, okay. current coverage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, we've got another mini series coming up. We've got another. They shadow dropped uh, an issue that was released this week, which is why I report why recording again. Um, and it's like you you like a character like Iron Fist or Moon Knight, and you don't necessarily expect to be buying two to three comics a month uh, with them in. I mean, delighted in one way, but also like it's a lot. You know, it's just like yeah. you're not expecting it. So, um, mm-hmm. but having said that, I wish it was happening with Iron Fist. So, you know. Yeah, I guess yeah. quality over quantity is a thing to right. Me. But we don't really have the quality right now. So. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would be nice. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I'll see you next time, or everyone. Hopefully, in less than five months. I was trying to say. Yes, but probably still yeah, at least in a August. little while. A little while. In, in August, August yeah. 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 For, for the, the 50th yes. anniversary yeah, issue. Yep. 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 So definitely not more. It's perfect timing. If realistically, that's probably when you'll see us next. Is for the 50th issue. Yes. But we might be around before. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, until mm-hmm. next time, may your fists be like unto a thing of iron. And may you, you know, don't do that high you were thinking of, because crime is bad. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun. So please don't sue us. You can contact us at sons of the dragon podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon, our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast, our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash sons of the dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are, our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast.wordpress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. 
And I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening. Thank you.